welcome to day 3 and we are going to continue reading conversations with god so mind is always your highest thought your clearest word your grandest feeling anything less is from another source so i just wanted us to write these three words highest thought highest thought clearest word grandest feeling so i just remember uh one thing <laughs> that you know initially when i was channeling uh so it would be like very very clear you know whatever i am saying and it would be it would create my heart it would open up my heart and i wouldn't be able to stop myself from saying that message and one day i was just uh, doing something some we were i was busy or I, was, i don't know what i was doing in between the channeling yeah and kanjan swati and pratibha were there and uh, something started happening to pratibha <laughs> pratibha started hearing that sit quiet <laughs> and then remember pratibha so and that was also very clearest word very clear pratibha you can share that yeah it was like those were the days when i didn't believe much in channeling but uh, you know anu was giving some message and then uh, the rest of us were like you know i must say gossiping <laughs> and then it was a loud clear voice saying can you sit quiet for some time <laughs> yeah all of us it was like yelling somebody was yelling man it's important sit quiet <laughs> important and sit quiet and that, those days pratibha would not um, say anything in fact she wouldn't even she was just confused like what is channeling and what is happening you know <laughs> yeah and uh, this happened to her and then you you took us to a metatron cube like you you put us in metatron uh, markaba and you took us on the journey you started oh god i don't remember <laughs> <laughs> yeah you you guided that meditation afterwards yeah oh wonderful <laughs> yeah so that was interesting yeah so it is the highest thought the clearest word and the grandest feeling so every time you know all these uh, aditi is not here but she keeps asking what is the difference between thought and intuition how to know you know you guys also asked me in the beginning like how to know what is thought and intuition so the, i always used to tell that thoughts will give you fear lower emotions you know they will have worry they will have guilt or they will have some lower emotion will be there but intuition will always come with an opening of your heart okay so it might contain love joy truth you know so intuition you can also write that intuition contains higher feelings love joy truth courage it makes you feel powerful okay yeah sometimes it is very neutral sometimes you don't even feel anything it's just a thought without any feeling so if feeling is there then it will be a good feeling okay and what is the highest word highest thought yeah did i tell you about the what jhasa told me that uh, about highest thought wins did i tell you guys yeah in the in the class ah okay yes so yeah so if somebody is sending bad vibration to you like thinking oh this bad thing should happen to ashwin this bad thing to happen happen should uh, should happen to chan channi you know that person will not win if you send love to that person okay It, because that's the grandest feeling the grandest feeling will win okay the highest thought will win that you think best of that person that i bless you with best things may you get the best things that will win okay that's why compassion is the biggest protector compassion is the biggest protector yesterday somebody was in my house and he said dear yeah, this hot spot is always on in your house why uh, do you think this radiation is good for you maine kaha all radiation is good for me he said why how, how can it be 
I said, I am very compassionate towards the radiation. How long will I continue to be like, oh, radiation is so bad. Radiation is so bad. Radiation is so bad. There is a tower in front of my house. So all radiation is good for me. Yes, Ashwin, you were going to say something. Ashwin, you were saying something? No? Okay. So, yeah. When, once you are compassionate towards something, that thing cannot hurt you. Yeah? There is already radiation coming from the sun, from the cosmos. There is So why should we differentiate between this radiation or that radiation? Have love towards all of them. You send an outward energy. You know, so that will neutralize. Day before yesterday, I was with somebody who was going to smoke a cigarette. Okay. So I said, just give your cigarette to me. And I blessed the cigarette. I gave it a lot of love. And uh, Reiki started flowing. Just uh, maybe two, three minutes I gave. And then I gave it back to him. So he said, uh, what did you do? I said, I just gave love to the cigarettes. So he said, uh, what will it do? I said, you experience and tell me what will it do? You know? And I said, just see what happens. And he started smoking and he said, oh, it's smooth. It's going very smoothly. And it's very soft, very light. But yeah, I know that. Because I experiment with things. And my brother, uh, you know, used to smoke. So I used to bless his cigarettes and it became softer and lighter. And it doesn't give that, it doesn't hurt here. So yeah, love can change anything. Pratibha, you were saying something. Yeah, so recently Santosh is not well and uh, uh, he, he wanted to drink coffee. So the analytical brain in me was saying coffee is not good when he's well. But then I went and he said, shall I drink? You know, you have that face. Then I said, okay, you drink, but give the coffee to me first. <laughs> so I did drink it to him and gave it to him. And uh, by afternoon he was saying... Uh, my throat pain is gone. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. So when I gave him treatment, it didn't work. <laughs> so I made him drink what he wanted, but I just gave it to and gave it to him. And his throat pain was gone by afternoon. <laughs> absolutely. Absolutely. You know, that person said that if you are so allergic to cigarettes, then I can stop smoking. I said, no, don't deprive yourself of anything. You know, never deprive. My teacher has told me. So <laughs> if... Yeah. Like, and like what I felt was if I feel coffee is bad then that is coming out of me but I, I must not give that thought to anybody else when if at all it comes within them then it's okay mm. like exactly. very nice yes. by that body is creating a craving for them right Absolutely. So the highest thought, so everybody understood what is the highest thought, the grandest feeling and the clearest word. I think this repeats later also in the book. Okay. Anything less is from another source. Okay. So it's also clarifying that there are other sources. Okay. From which you get information. Right. But God is from the highest. So God is basically love and anything less than that is not God. That's what he's saying. Yeah. It is away from God. How much away from God you have gone? That's what is called hate, guilt, shame, all those things. Now the task of differentiation becomes easy. For it should not be difficult, even for the beginning student, to identify the highest, the clearest, and the grandest. Yet, will I give you these guidelines? The highest thought is always the thought which contains joy. Clearest words are those which contains truth. Okay, what is truth? What is truth? Joy, you understand, right? What is joy? Yeah, that's clear, I think. But what is truth? This is something very difficult to understand. Yeah. So truth for me is what makes, what makes, a, what rings a bell in my heart. It's like, Tang. it resonates with me yeah that's what we say it resonates in your heart it's like yeah this is true this is true yeah so truth is not coming from the mind or right and wrong of this world the truth is always what rings true to me like when i told the story of uh, the indigos crystals and uh, rainbows 
I always tell, does it ring true to you? I'm telling a story about aliens and about how we came from different planets, but it rang true to all of you. Yes. So that is truth. So the clearest words. So generally, because when I'm speaking, I'm speaking very clearly and that is containing truth. But if it resonates with you, then it is true for you. The grandest feeling is the feeling which you call love. Okay, so the grandest feeling is love. The clearest word is truth. And the highest thought is of joy. So these things are joy, truth, love. These things are interchangeable. And one always leads to the other. It matters not in which order they are placed. Having these guidelines determined which messages are mine and which have come from another source. The only question remaining is whether my messages will be heeded. <laughs> will you look at my messages? Will you think about my messages? My most powerful messenger, ah, most of my messages are not heeded. Some because they seem too good to be true. Others because they seem too difficult to follow. You know, ek to bhoti, bhoti, too good to be true ho jata hai, to hume lagta nahi hai, aisa to nahi ho sakta. And then some things are very difficult to follow. Like if somebody says, step out of this marriage, you know, then you're like, hey, hello, <laughs> how, how to do that? You know, it's so fearful. How will, be, how will I be taken care of? And those things. So sometimes it is very difficult to follow. Many, because they are simply misunderstood. And many of the messages are misunderstood. You know, most because they are not received. Okay. So, पहले तो जो थोड़ा बहुत है वो कुछ ज्यादा ही सच लगने लगता ज्यादा ही अच्छा लगने लगता है ऐसा तो हो ही नहीं सकता है थोड़ा बहुत है कि बहुत डिफिकल्ट टू फॉलो एंड देन बहुत सारे मैसेजेस ऐसे हैं जो मिस इंटरप्रेटेड है ठीक है इवन इन आर कल्चर ऑफ कोर्स वेदास वर रिटर्न एंड उपनिषद वर रिटर्न बट समटाइम्स पीपल हैव मिस मिस इंटरप्रेटेड दैट यू नो मिस अंडरस्टूड इट्स गॉड्स वर्ड बट मिस अंडरस्टूड इवन जीसस इज वर्ड हैव बीन मिस अंडरस्टूड right so most people don't even receive that message yeah my most powerful messenger is experience and even this you ignore <laughs> experience is teaching us something that is a powerful message but are we listening to that especially this you ignore especially tum experience ko ignore kar dete ho tumhe lagta hai ki ye to tumhare sath ho raha hai या मतलब somebody is victimizing you, punishing you, है ना? Your world would not be in its present condition were you have were you to have simply listened to your experience. The result of your not listening to your experience is that you keep reliving it over and over again. Oh, so yesterday, so my sister was saying something about some person, हाँ. Huh. <laughs> there was this person okay he his first girlfriend he, uh, was there with him for some time and then she got married to someone else then he had another girlfriend and then she got married to another uh, guy so it was like what is happening in his life every person that he is in love with gets married to someone else so this is a pattern the experience was supposed to teach him something he was supposed to learn from it he did not learn it so the pattern was repeating yeah so For example, in my own life, like I attracted abusers as partners for all these years, and I kept doing that because I had this mental a belief system when I was a young child that my father is my first love, and my father is abusive to me. He loves me, so it is okay for him to hit me. Right? So it's okay for me to have a partner who hurts me. right so that belief system was you know playing out in my life again and again and again and until i realized that no this is not okay this is not okay for me this should stop so once you become aware of okay why did i attract this why did i attract this so in louise hay's book you can write this question how am i contributing to this experience just write the question first how am i contributing 
to this experience. So this is, this brings the power back in your hands and you are powerful. Hare Krishna Govindi, Hare Murari. Yeah, you wrote, so how am I contributing to this experience? So once you write that, your idea shifts from a victim mentality, from poor me personality. <laughs> poor me, this happened to me, oh my God. You know, to, okay, how, what did I do wrong? Where did I go wrong? You know, and you start taking the control back in your hand. <clears throat> and then you really start looking at life. That what is it within me that is actually creating this reality? Then you check your beliefs, your thoughts and feelings about that issues. Right? And then you correct. Oh, this is what? This is what is contributing. Oh, I should change that. This doesn't serve any purpose. So the experience around me is a reflection of my inner reality. Yeah? So what are my thoughts and feelings about money? What are my thoughts and feelings about love? What are my thoughts and feelings about partners? What are my thoughts and feelings about business? You know? So... In every stream, if it is not working, how am I contributing to that? You know, that is very, very powerful statement and a question statement, basically. How am I contributing to this? You can actually just live with this question. Live with this question for some time. You will start getting more and more information. Yeah? Okay. Where did it go? Yeah. Huh. Most powerful messenger is experience, but you ignore this. You would, the world would not be in the present condition were you to have simply listened to your experience. The result of not listening to your experience is that which you keep reliving over and over again. For my purpose will not be thwarted, for my will be ignored. You will get the message sooner or later. So this is also a problem. <laughs> unless it comes to us, unless we listen, God will not stop. It's true. It's so true. You know, first it comes as a thought. If you don't listen, it, it screams. It screams. If you don't listen, it starts giving you pain in the body. So that's why in the book, Hands of Light, it's written that every pain is a guidance. Every pain is a message, messenger. Yeah. So imagine when my whole body was in pain. How many messages of God did I miss? That it gave me entire body pain. My whole body stopped working. It's like because I was so much going on this wrong direction where I'm a vegetarian. I believe that uh, you know you should not kill animals and I'm killing animals for my work and especially baby animals, mice. So I've gone so far away that he was like, okay, first I will give her joint pain in the legs. Then I'll give her here. Then I'll give her here. Then everywhere. So that she doesn't, she's not able to work. And the experience, of course, has, to, has taught me everything. I will not force you to, however. Hey, excuse me, you forced me. I will never coerce you. For I have given you a free will. The power to do as you choose. And I will never take that away from you ever. Just make it very difficult for us. Hena? <laughs> this guy. <laughs> and so I will continue sending you the same messages over and over again throughout the millennia and to whatever corner of the universe you occupy. Endlessly I will send you my messages until you have received them and held them close, calling them your own. My messages will come in a hundred forms at a thousand moments across a million years. You cannot miss them if you truly listen. You cannot ignore them once truly heard. Thus, oh, this is also true. This is also true. Hello, Chandani. Finally show, showing me her face. Hello. Yeah. Happy to see. 
Okay. So my messages will come in a hundred forms at a thousand moments across a million years. You cannot miss them if you truly listen. You cannot ignore them once truly heard. So I want you to write that also. I cannot ignore once I truly hear. I cannot ignore once I truly hear. Oh, this is so true. <laughs> once you realize something, this is called realization. Is it called epiphany? These words are used for this. Epiphany, realization. Once you have a realization of something, we ignore it. After that, it stays with us. So you cannot ignore them once truly heard. So are we truly listening? You know, that's why Bhagavad Gita or any other text is called 10,000 times. When you don't read 10,000 times, nahi padha, tab tak you don't understand. Because you don't truly hear. That's, it's not like you have 10,000 times. Padna hai. That's literally uh, is not the translation of that. What they say is, any mantra, anything, the mind does not truly hear all the time. But maybe in those 10,000 times, one time you will listen. That's their hope. One time you will truly listen. And you'll be like, oh, this is what it means. And then it will become yours. Then that knowledge will be yours. So are we truly listening? You know, and what is the meaning of listening? Why, like I said, no, chintan, pele shravan hota hai, you listen. Then chintan hota hai, manan hota hai, then chintan hota hai. Manan is analysis. You know, is it true for me? Is it true for me? Does it work for me? Is it really true? And then once, whatever is truth, you take it and you do chintan on that. How is it true in our lives? How am I contributing? How am I doing this? How am I propagating this? What am I doing about it? You know? So then you do chintan. So truly listen. Thus will our communication begun, begin in earnest. For in the past, you have only talked to me, praying to me, interceding with me, beseeching me. And yet now, can I talk back to you, even as I'm doing here? How can I know that this communication is from God? So Neil is asking. How do I know that this is not my own imagination? Which is true for us. We could also ask that question. You have done automatic writing. Pavani, Pavani can ask this question. That am I communicating this? Bratibha did. Ashwin did. Bhavya also did that day. So you can say whether it is coming from some aspect of my own mind. Right? What would be the difference? God is answering. What would be the difference? Do you not see that I could just as easily work through your imagination as anything else? Imagination is also part of what God is giving you. That is what God is saying. That What is the difference? Even imagination I can use to talk to you. I will bring you the exact right thoughts, words or feelings at any given moment suited precisely to the purpose at hand using one device or several. Yeah. So he can use thought, he can use feeling, he can use emotion, he can use uh, energy, he can use experience, he can bring a person right in on your door. So anything can happen. Did I tell you about uh, George Clooney's wife? No? no? Okay. So, uh, George, like people say, no, that you, you need to go out to get... Uh, you need to be out there to get the person of your dreams or something like that. So, is that true? If God really wants to make you meet your other half and you are ready, your readiness is there. The first class we, thought, uh, we talked about readiness, right? So, if your readiness is there, then God can find several ways to bring your wife, your partner to your doorstep. She actually walked into his house with a lawyer. Okay, another lawyer was coming. He said, I will bring my friend. And he brought the friend and he just uh, found a wife. So the wife actually, the future wife stepped into his house. He never had to go out to a bar.
to look for a wife you know date anyone so you don't have to go anywhere to find your partner or to find anything everything should find you is if you are ready isn't it that's what pratibha has taught us that everything should find us find me <laughs> find me yeah so we are not supposed to go out there and look for things things should find us when we are ready so because if the god is bringing all this god is saying he will only bring it he will only bring the right thoughts the words feelings at any given moment so take precisely to the purpose at hand using one to five ab god keh raha hai ki main de dunga to tum vishwas kyu nahi kar rahe ho ki wo de raha hai ab chup chap baith ke le lene ka hai so jab wo dene ke liye taiyar hai to hum kyu itna haath pair marte rehte hain yeah ajay sir also told us this story that uh, one time one bhakt was i think i told this to chandni ashwin that ek bhakt tha wo pit raha tha to usne kaha he bhagwan mujhe bachaiye theek hai to krishna ji khana kha rahe the to krishna ji uth gaye beech mein khana khane ke and he went out and then he came back and his mother asked like abhi tum chale gaye fir abhi tum aa gaye ye kya ho raha hai so then he realized that the bhakt had picked up the astra to protect himself he didn't believe that god will come he didn't wait he didn't have patience right so god to aa raha hai lekin kya hum believe kar rahe hain god is coming god is bringing are we believing it will come are we ready with all our hearts like you remember that uh, there was a poster long time back i saw this that many people pray for rain but how many go with umbrellas if you believe that you are praying for rain and if you believe that rain is going to come you will go prepared with umbrellas you are ready to receive the rain you are ready to receive the rain but people go pray ki acha pata nahi barish hogi ki nahi lekin pray karke aa jate hain you know बट तुम्हें बिलीफ है कि नहीं रेन तो होगा ही मैंने प्रे किया है तो होगा ही होगा सो वन डे आई प्रेड फॉर रेन एंड आई टोल्ड माय हस्बैंड दैट यू कम बिफोर फोर ओ क्लॉक आफ्टर फोर ओ क्लॉक इट विल रेन ओके एंड इट वाज फुल लाइक धूप था पूरा सो माय हस्बैंड वाज लाइक ऐसे कैसे अरे अभी पूरा धूप है कहाँ होगा एंड बहुत बहुत बारिश हुआ बहुत बारिश हुआ ही कुड नॉट वॉक बैक फ्रॉम हिज प्लेस तो पूरा लेकिन वो भीग के आया पूरा you know he came at 10 o'clock but so once you are once you know once you pray for it you believe that it will happen i prayed and i just believed it will happen you will know that these words are from me because you of your own accord have never spoken so clearly <laughs> this this is what is the major difference that's why i said pavanis you you don't write so clearly so this is not you because she said is it me is it me have i written this i'm like no it's you have not written it because it is so clear direct to the point you will know these words are from me because you of your own accord have never spoken so clearly had you already spoken so clearly on these questions would you would not be asking them agar tumhe pehle se hi pata hota to ye puchte kyun tum to then neel is saying to god kis se baat karta hai to whom does god communicate are these special people are there special times all people are special and all moments are golden okay write this down all moments are golden okay now i want you to think about this when god says something don't take it as truth right what do you say all moments are golden now i want you to think of this are all moments golden just think for your mind mind will say no that moment was not so golden that that happened that time <laughs> it wasn't really golden that time <laughs> you know 
Yeah. So what does God mean by this? The God says that there is no special moment in which I am going to talk to you. Every moment is right moment for me to speak to you. Every moment is a golden moment to speak to me. You understand? It's not that one particular eclipse I will talk to you or one particular full moon I will talk to you, new moon I will talk to you. I will not talk to you on certain dates. That's what God is saying. There is no person and there is no time one more special than another. It's not that Ashwin is special than Chandni, that God will only speak to Ashwin and not to Chandni. Many people choose to believe that God communicates in special ways and only with special people. This removes the mass of the people from responsibility for hearing my message. Can we please write that? Yeah. So, am I taking the responsibility for hearing my message? Am I taking the responsibility for taking my message? much less receiving it, which is another matter. Yeah. First is you take the message and then you receive. Receiving is different, right? Receiving is completely imbibing that message, using that message, which allows them and allows them to take someone else's word for everything. You don't have to listen to me for you have already decided that others have heard from me on every subject and you have to listen to them. So he's talking about like how Bhagavad Gita, yeah? So Bhagavad, Bhagavan spoke to Arjuna. Can't Bhagavan speak to you personally about you? He dissolved his problems. Yeah? Whatever confusion was there in his mind, God was trying to solve that. But now we believe Bhagavad Gita is true for everybody. What about us? God wants to say something to us. Now, we are not taking responsibility of creating our own Gita. Yes? Yes? There should be something that is specific to Chandni. And that book is what we are writing. In this book, this is, this, this is what we are creating. We are creating a Gita for us. You know, the song of God, which is specific for me. A song of God for me, a song of God for Ashwin, for Chandni, for Bhavya, for Pavani, for Pratibha, for Rohini. A song of God we are creating in this. So we are not shying away from responsibility of hearing the message of God anymore. By listening to what other people think, they heard me say, you don't have to think at all. This is the biggest reason for most people turning from my messages on a personal level. If you acknowledge that you are receiving my messages directly, then you are responsible for interpreting them. It is far safer and much easier to accept the interpretation of others, even others who have lived 2000 years ago, than seek to interpret the message you may very well be receiving in this moment now. <laughs> so you feel safe. This is sarcasm. Hai. God is very sarcastic. <laughs> so God is saying that it's very safe that you listen to the other side, you take the other side, you accept the other side, and you don't work with yourself. 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 You don't Not taking responsibility. That yes, we sit with yourself, we go deep. And if you take that responsibility, oh my God, the life that opens up for you is so huge. Every moment becomes a conversation with God. Every moment, you, are, you will be in constant communication. You will not step out of it. So, but you need to start interpreting. Yes, Ashwin. There is, there is also one uh, part of living session that uh, I taught. Take the message as it is given. Not the way you want it. Such a Yes. <laughs> so that happens a lot. That happens a lot. God will say one statement. And you know, when I give it to people, they're like, huh, this one is true. This one is not true. I will not take this. I'm like, no, this is, this is together. It's a package. <laughs> if I channel. Because So yeah, 
It's true. Accept the message as it is. Not how I want it. क्योंकि हम तो पहले से ही डिसाइड कर लिए हैं कि हमें ये चाहिए तो गॉड कह रहा है नहीं ये तुम्हारे लिए अच्छा नहीं है तो हम कैसे बिलीव कर लें राइट लाइक फॉर एग्जांपल बहुत सारे लोगों ने झांसर को बोला कि आप बड़ा सेंटर और हॉस्पिटल क्यों नहीं बनाते ही ऑन्स अ लॉट राइट एवरी डे टू हंड्रेड पेशेंट यूज टू सी तो तुम सोचो दिन का चालीस कमाते हैं जिस पहले कमाते थे अब तो और हो सकता है कमाते हो दिन का चालीस लेकिन इन वन सिंगल डे इमेजिन सो तो उनको बोला कोई हॉस्पिटल आप क्यों नहीं खोल देते तो उन्होंने बहुत सारा पैसा इकट्ठा किया बहुत लोगों ने भी पैसा दिया आई थिंक सत्तर लाख या ऐसा कुछ था शायद ज्यादा ही था इकट्ठा हो गया उन्होंने अपने घर में रखा और वो लोग कहीं घर से बाहर थे और वो सब चोरी हो गया ओके okay. तो सर ने फिर सबको बोला कि हम कोई सेंटर नहीं बनाने वाले हैं ठीक है गॉड ने बोला है कि कोई सेंटर की जरूरत नहीं है और हम यहाँ पर वैसे ही खुश हैं तो वो इतने सालों से कोरमंगला में एक छोटे से जगह पे कर रहे हैं जबकि बहुत लोगों ने उनको बोला था तो उन्होंने बोला कि गॉड ने वो हमको विजडम नहीं दिया था लोगों ने वो विजडम दिया था राइट थिंकिंग दैट इट इज राइट फॉर मी बट गॉड ने मेरे को बोला था कि नहीं करना है बट आई डेंट लिसन टू गॉड आई लिसन टू अदर पीपल सो विद द एक्सपीरियंस आई आई अंडरस्टूड तो वो एक्सपीरियंस उन्होंने एक्सेप्ट किया कि यस गॉड इज सेइंग दैट आई विल नॉट आई शुड नॉट बिल्ड अ हॉस्पिटल सो ही डिड नॉट बिल्ड अ हॉस्पिटल जबकि उनके फैमिली वाले या सब कुछ फोर्स कर रहे होंगे बट ही जन स्टूड हिज ग्राउंड की नो इट्स नॉट गोना हैपन बिकॉज दैट्स नॉट अ मैसेज फ्रॉम गॉड वेन गॉड से गॉड विल डू इट है ना सो दैट इज अ वेरी इंपॉर्टेंट थिंग एक्सेप्ट द मैसेज एज इट नॉट हाउ आई वॉन्ट इट अदर पीपल वॉन्ट दीज थिंग्स फॉर यू and you go ahead and start doing and then you realize oh this is what god did not give me okay interesting ha huh. 722 okay we will write questions now for the day let's see i'll read this paragraph Okay. Yet I invite you to a new form of communication with God. Okay. God is inviting all of us. This book is specifically written for us. Okay. For for the beginner who is wanting to start this communication dialogue. Yeah. Yeah. In a very beautiful way. Yet I invite you to a new form of communication with God. A two way communication. In truth, it is you who have invited me. For I have come to you in this form right now in answer to your call. and so can you also can each of us also make a call to god and then believe that god will answer yes believe that god will answer and then start this two way communication daily why do some people like christ for example seem to hear more of your communication than others <laughs> so neil is asking ki jesus ko kyun zyada sunai deta tha humko to sunai nahi deta because some people are willing to actually listen they are willing to hear they are willing to remain open to the communication even when it seems scary or crazy or downright wrong yeah so am i willing to actually listen that is the question am i willing to actually listen with chandni that that time we decided uh, we we asked a question to uh, angels and uh, the answer was completely different than the previous time yeah and what they said you were not willing to listen to that answer then now you are willing to listen to an another answer right so your openness your readiness your willingness has opened for a better answer to come forward for a more clearer one to come forward so am i actually willing to listen or i, I do already have like me please ye wala mat batana aisa mat batana you know okay so am i actually willing to listen there are they are willing to hear and they are willing to remain open to communication 
even when it seems scary. So for example, when channeling was happening to me, like when the body used to move and all these things, it was very scary, guys. You can ask Pratibha. She was the most scared of all people looking at my hands and yeah, it used to be very physical. But even though it was scary, I was willing to let it happen. Hena? Even though it was scary for me, even though I felt like a crazy person, but I was letting it happen. So that willingness, let me see, be curious. Yeah, be curious. Let me see. So be curious like a kid. And you know, that's why Neil ka ye book mujhe bahut pasand hai. Because he has the curiosity like a kid in this. So God is also being open to tell him everything. <laughs> okay. I will, I will write this last. We should listen to God even when what's being said seems wrong. Neil is asking like a little kid. See, especially when it seems wrong <laughs> especially when it seems wrong if you think you are right about everything who needs to talk to God so when we get some opposite information which is our belief system or belief system that's when we should pay attention Okay, so many, many years ago, yeah, it was 2011, so 10, 11 years, 11 years ago, I was not into any practice. One of my friends, he said, you know, Anu, there is nothing right or wrong. And that time I was like, no, no, there is a right, there is a wrong, you know, and I was fighting with, uh, you know, every government institution that there is, like, Bescom ke saath fight kiya, municipal corporation ke saath fight kar rahi hoon, ki nahi, ye nahi hona chahi, yaha pe paani aise problem hai, yaha pe electricity ka problem. I was fighting with everybody. Because I was like, there is a right. And they're not doing right things. Right? But that thing that he said now, that there is nothing right or wrong, it just kept in the back of my head, ki kya ye sahi ho sakta hai? I didn't reject it. Okay, in that moment, uske muh pe mene reject kiya, but that little window I had kept. And that over the many years, I realized, oh, there is no right or wrong. There is no right or wrong. And now, when I am out of this morality of right and wrong, it's so peaceful. I'm not in resistance or fighting with people, hey, you are doing wrong, that is doing wrong. No. Like acceptance of everything. It's happening for a purpose. You know, in the same world, elephants also exist. Scorpios also exist. Right? Hippopotamus exists. And seahorse exists. In the same world. Who is right? What is the right way of living? For the Scorpio, it is important to strike back. For the snake, it is important to strike back. But they have the right to live, right? So, the snake has to live their own truth and the elephant has to live their own truth. The monkeys have to live their own truth. Every person that is on the planet, they have to follow their own truth. You have a right to exist in your, your own unique way. You know, one of the children, uh, like you, another Zen girl, she was saying that, Anu, I think I'm a bad person. All of you are very good. I think I'm bad. Manika, you have a right to exist as a bad person. It's okay. And she was like, oh, okay. <laughs> you know, she, why to fight with that thought, you know, unnecessarily. So you have a right to exist, right? Yeah, so especially when God, yeah, Rashmi, you're saying something. So especially when you, when it seems wrong. Swadharma. Swadharma. The Swadharma. Swadharma of Tattva Bodh. Yes. So, it's about our own dharma. It is different for everybody. Yeah, That's why Arjuna can kill. But Krishna cannot kill. You understand? Although Krishna has enough power to kill. But that's not his dharma. Of that lifetime. Especially when it seems wrong. If you think you are right about everything. Who needs to talk to God? Go ahead. 
and act on all that you know. But notice that you have been doing that since time began. And look at what shape the world is in. <laughs> so he says, Ki, Bina sunne to tum kar hi rahe ho. Dekho kya kiya tumne dunia ka. Ab thoda sun ke kar lo. Clearly you have missed something. Obviously there is something you don't understand. That which you do understand must seem right to you because right is a term you use to designate something with which you agree. What you have missed will therefore appear at first to be wrong. Yes? So, we do what we do, that's what we do. What we are doing in our world, that's what we do. But that's the right result. That's the right result. That's what we have missed, right? This is what God is saying. Yes, Pavani, do you understand? कुछ नहीं समझ में आया तो बीच में रोक सकती हो पवनी मेरे को यू कैन स्टॉप मी इन बिटवीन सो कुछ नहीं समझ आया सॉरी व्हाट इज इट क्लियरली यू हैव मिस समथिंग या सो बेसिकली अगर सब कुछ हमने सही ही मान लिया होता लाइक like, अगर हमने सब कुछ सही किया अभी तक तो हम दुखी क्यों हैं दैट्स व्हाट गॉड इज सेइंग कि अगर तुम्हें तुमने सब कुछ सही किया है तुम्हारे हिसाब से तो तुमने सब सही किया है you have acted rightly only but still there is unhappiness still there is sadness still there is conflict still there is guilt still there is anger so that means you have missed something so whatever you would have missed would appear wrong to you at first when people will tell you hey there is no right and wrong you will feel no 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 that's not true right so you will feel ah it's a wrong information yes when people will say hey don't don't be um you know self you need to be selfish when people will say you will you need to be selfish at first you will be like no what are you saying everybody says uh, it's bad to be selfish but then you realize it is self cherishing it is self appointing it is self alignment yes when i am aligned then only i can make anything happen so over time the first time it will seem wrong the first time it will always seem wrong okay so whatever i have missed will seem wrong in the beginning okay so the question you can write down the question the only way to move forward on this is to ask yourself what would happen if everything i thought was wrong was actually right jisko bhi main galat sochta tha kya pata wo sahi ho what would happen if everything i thought was wrong was actually right so with this question i think we will end this here today page number 7 of any ending at 7 <laughs> so you remind me i'm so happy to have a book okay okay so what are the questions that we are going to uh think about this hmm okay so today's question we have you can star mark those questions like how am i contributing to this experience you choose one experience of life and you ask god that you know how am i contributing to this particular experience you can once you complete that you can go to another experience so yeah so first question is how am i contributing to this experience this particular one you have already written that so you can mark that okay how are all moments golden because god has said all moments are golden so we should ask and god like how are all moments golden so the next question is how are all moments golden you can write second around this okay why am i not taking the responsibility for taking my message why just add why am i not okay so why and not you can add to that if you have written the question 
why am I not taking the responsibility for taking my message? I think taking responsibility. Huh? Sorry. What? The question that am I taking responsibility? Huh? That is also important. Am I taking the responsibility for message? Yeah. You're asking God. So am I taking the responsibility for taking my message? Huh? You can ask that also. Yeah, because it might be yes. The answer might be yes. So why why to write that? Okay. So am I taking the responsibility? You can continue with that message only and that question only. Accept the message notice. Am I willing to actually listen? Okay. Am I willing to actually listen? Yeah. That also you can ask, I think. It will open up something. I think it's a portal. This question is a portal. Am I willing to actually listen? <laughs> and the last one is a... Yeah. It's like you can write an entire book on this. What would happen if everything I thought was wrong was actually right? Okay. So I don't know if you want to, uh, you know, go for this question. But these four questions we must write. And the last one, we can keep it and just be with it for a while. Just hold the question for a while. And then maybe you go into it. If you get the answer, very good. Please share. But I think these four questions, we, we need it right now. We need it. Okay. So is that, is that good enough? Yeah. Okay. So how I am planning uh, for this is uh, not to do too much of this classes because there is a lot of chintan manan that is supposed to happen. So maybe two classes in a week. Okay. Maybe two classes in a week. And then you, uh, you know, you do the rest of the time you think about the questions, what we have. Think about those questions. Write these questions on a sticky note and put somewhere so you are thinking. And for this energy exchange, there can be sliding slate scale model, 500 se leke, jitna tumko dena hai. Theek hai? 500, 1000, 2000, whatever you want to give. So for month, uh, like we are starting 7th to 7th every month. Okay. Because I don't know how long it will go. Uh, this one. So that's what I was thinking. Yeah. You want to add or anything, change anything? Let me know. I think two classes per week is okay. Because uh, every day, it has a questions. Like, yeah. Correct. I think yeah. that's good. Okay, so we will uh, keep this as, uh, yeah, and uh, anything else you want to say for this? Ah, and also, if you're not able to do the questions also, do join for the discussion because you learn from other people's uh, experience also. And later on, Maybe you, because of what Pratima has shared, maybe it will trigger a thought inside you, you know. So then your answer comes very easily and you were not able to write it on your own. But because somebody said something, oh, it became clear, oh, this is what I was supposed to write or something. So even if you were not able to write, do come for the discussion. So one, one day we will read and one day we will do the discussion after you are completing the, the thing. So uh, what days suit you? You can decide, you can tell me. I can stop recording now.